Congratulations on your recent report on the benefits of responding to global climate change. Could you please talk about the overall intent of the report? Well, what the study looked at was, was two scenarios. One, if we essentially don't do anything to try to mitigate climate change. Um, and it looked at um, uh, impacts in 2050 and 2100. And then the other scenario was what if we do, that we take steps to put in place mitigation that would um, uh, keep us within that two degrees Celsius um, uh, window. We hear a lot about this two degree scenario. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if you could just explain what, what is this two degree scenario? Why does it matter? Yeah, so the, the reference point is a pre-industrial um, society, um, and this is a highly relevant statistic or metric um, that the scientific community has used for a long time uh, to mark a level at which we would see truly significant uh, and, uh, and dangerous impacts from climate change if, uh, if the climate, if, if the temperature goes up uh, two degrees or more. And then I, I think another r really important aspect of this, which is uh, sometimes lost, is the impact on and really the loss of, of human life that we're talking about as some of these more dangerous scenarios unfold. Right. Could you comment on that? Yeah, the statistics are pretty startling, as are the statistics about how much of this loss of life we could prevent under a mitigation scenario. So I'm, I'm an air person, so I'll focus on a couple of air statistics. Um, what the report shows that with a mitigation scenario, we could save 50, 57,000 lives annually from air pollution related deaths. Um, and uh, 12,000 lives annually from heat-related deaths. I mean, th th this, these are important gains that we can make if we take some steps now. Yeah. And those are just lives just here in the United States, right? right? So That's right. extrapolate it out into parts of the world that are potentially less resilient to right. some of the effects of climate change, those numbers become very large indeed. That's right. That's right. Given some of those statistics, literally hundreds of billions of dollars in potential mm -hmm. savings, tens of thousands of lives at stake mm -hmm. every year, you know, why aren't we on track to, to achieve some of these benefits? Well, a lot of action is being taken and, 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 and more will come. I'm, I'm confident that more will come. Um, uh, we here in the United States uh, have a number of things underway. Um, President Obama last year, about a year ago, issued his climate action plan with a, a series of actions from across the federal government, things that we can do that are within our power to do. EPA itself is moving forward with, with a number of, of programs uh, we already have. Um, we have in place um, uh, now requirements to grant greatly increase the fuel efficiency of, of uh, trans our transportation, cars and trucks, and we're doing more of that. Um, we're moving forward with a program for, for power plants. Um, these are highly significant actions, um, as well as a number of other things that, that, that really get us on the way and put the United States in the position of being able to talk credibly in the international community uh, so that other countries will, will, will do similar things, and we're seeing a lot of movement there. Let's talk a little bit about the global picture with the, the you know, the Paris talks mm -hmm. upcoming. I mean, it, what what does success look like for us, for for the planet, really, coming out of out of the Paris talks? Well, I think everybody is is, is getting excited yeah. about um, uh, countries really putting meaningful commitments on the table, and I think EPA is is uh, 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 trying to do what we need to do to help the president uh, have this country be an effective leader. I think we need to show that 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 these programs are doable, um, that they they actually fit within the where industry and and especially the electric uh, sector is going now, moving towards renewable energy and energy efficiency and and the the the, the great thing about about these um, programs is that they they're so positive in terms of the the investments that happen in in communities in order to to turn these clean technologies into into reality and, and that's what we're seeing and so we're riding that wave um, uh, maybe pushing that wave along a little bit faster than it might be going otherwise in order to get where we need to be yeah and, you know with all of these enormous challenges uh, what, what what what's a source of hope for you I'm incredibly hopeful. I think that the work we're doing here at EPA and all across the government is is um, hugely impactful and important. Uh, but I also, it's not the only thing going on. We we spend a lot of time talking to businesses and companies, many of whom are thinking the same way. They they understand that that in order to protect 
the future for our children and grandchildren, we all need to be rowing together um, in the same direction. And I'm also encouraged by the people that I meet with. I meet with lots of, of, uh, of people either in groups or just on their own who um, are very supportive of the work. They, they want to know what they can do in their own lives. And you know, I think sometimes people can feel that like uh, there's switching off a light or turning the TV off is just so small. How could it possibly make a difference? But it does, mm -hmm. um, and and so we need we need those actions, and we need the actions that EPA can take, and we need the actions that that companies can take to 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 send the signal to show leadership themselves that this is something we can address. Yeah, we're seeing increasing evidence that millennials and younger generations are really clued into this issue. Yeah. It's another yep. source of hope. Yes, absolutely. I have a couple of them myself as children, and um, uh, they, they are clued in, and it does give me hope.